prepare to strike now. All right. We have Tokido on the right using Chun Li, and Higa on the left using Abuki. Definitely uh, not one of the higher tier characters, Abuki. Very unusual to see uh, some top level Abuki, but that's what Higa's bringing to the table here. Right now, Higa just trying to find a way to get in to see, see if he can be able to start some mix ups with Abuki. And Tokido doing it. Oh, there we go. There's a start right there using the EX kunai's in the air to get in. And there's the mix ups, but nice tech there from Tokido. But Tokido trapped in the corner. He's got to get out, but Higa just going right at him. Catches Tokido with a low forward to take round one. Wow, what a dominating match there. Showing you that a high tier character like Chun Li can be defeated even by a character like Ibuki. Higa there zoning with those uh, jump straight up kunais. Just to control space, keep Tokido from applying a lot of pressure. Nice, using that chain combo there in the air. Tokido did not crouch in between, so we do not get a hit. And we got a hit confirmed. Fireball in the super. Mix up time for Chun-Li going for a throw. Nice, baiting out another. Got him scared of a throw, so he hit him with the low roundhouse and then caught him with a throw after that. Then he go with a wake up uh, hop kick into the supers, and he's going to do it again. Oh, but this time not fast enough, and it looked like Tokido tried to parry in the middle or something just to see if he can get some momentum. Got hit by halfway through by the super, and then managed to take the round anyway. Got in there and managed to hit Higa with the back fierce. Nice parry there. Higa got a little too uh, happy with those low forwards. So Kido uh, basically sniffed it out, parried it, and comboed into the super. Had Higa in the corner. You can see Chun-Li already with another meter built up, so he's got a huge opportunity. And I like Higa using that kunai right before he lands to delay his timing. Oh, went over and Higa didn't punish, but here we go. Oh, dropped it again. Just doing it a little too late every time. That's normally supposed to combo. Oh, nice. Using the hop to get out of the corner there, Higa does. And now he's got Tokido in the corner, but Tokido with just a jump fierce to the face. A quick low jab and then another low forward to take the first game. Nice comeback there and adjustment from... see if Higa can readjust and counter Tokido's win there. Catches him with the surprise overhead. And there's that standing fierce from Chun-Li, reaches so far, has a lot of priority. Wow, low forward going right under Chun-Li's low roundhouse after the parry. Wow, three or four overheads in a row, five. Tokido managed to avoid the fifth one, but Higa got four in a row. Oh, nice counter though from Tokido. And once again, using that wake up hop kick there just to avoid throws. Smart play from Higa there, but once again, did not combo into the knife super properly. Tokido down to a little bit of life. Higa trying to just finish it off with a little chip or an overhead. Manages to do it with a low forward kick. Catches Tokido off guard. Now Tokido trying to build a little bit of meter with those back pierces. Get a pretty decent amount of meter for that. Oh, he should be able to block that, but no punish there. She uh, she recovers very fast from the from the knife super. Wow, look at this jumping up and down from Higa there, trying to get into Kido's head, mixing it up there that time, landing with the double hit target combo in the air. Nice low jab in the super. That low jab has incredible speed. Nice block there from Tokido. Once again, Chun-Li low jab, the only move in the game that's two frames. Only normal move, I should say. And Higa there, just playing a very nice defensive game. Keeping Tokido on. Tokido's got to find a way in there. Whoa, Red Parry, nice. Blocked one of the kunais. Red Parry the second to avoid a little bit of chip damage. He's going to go through the kunai and get Tokido, uh, get Higa. Nice clutch reaction there from Tokido to get through that knife. Ow! Back fierce. Nice parry there from Higa. Again, nice parry from Higa. 
But we saw Higa get into a, a lead in the last round and still lose it. So Keto's got Higa in the corner now. Two low sweeps, three in a row, but Higa without an unsuc I mean, he punished with the standing forward, but could have gotten a lot more out of that. Now you see Tokido just kind of, it looks like he's buffering the super just to get ready to go through some kunais, not expecting him to actually continue to throw him so low to the ground. Higa just trying to bait a super out now. Oh wow, turn around just in time. And now Higa once again on the verge of victory for this game. He needs to win this one to stay in it. Oh, nice dash under throw. Higa probably trying to parry. Oh no. And Higa. Oh, with an unsuccessful punish! And Tokido just takes it with a meaty fireball. Higa blocking the super and not punishing properly. <laughs> goes with Makoto. Goes with the Seichusen Godanzuki. Seichusen Godanzuki, much more useful for combos. You can link it off of her rush punch. So you can actually get a lot of damage. There's a lot of distances where you can do universal overhead into uh, Seichu Shinri Rodanzuki. So it's uh, Super Art 1 is the punish super. And uh, Super Art 2, if you think you can actually land that command grab right there uh, close to the corner, it can basically win an entire match for you. But if you think it's going to be harder to land that, you may want to go with Ultra 1. I'm sorry, Super Art 1 instead. And Boss taking that first round very quickly right now. Ed trying to keep Boss out right now. Of course, the projectile game in this game, much more weak compared to other Street Fighter games, thanks to the parry. Nice jump parry there from Boss. Gets in there with the with the command grab. And now Ed been able to buy a little bit of momentum, but Boss still has him fairly pinned to the corner. Ed using that EX Hurricane to get out of there right now. Nice backdash away from the command grab. Punishes the blow forward into the Shippu. Nice parry there from Edma once again. And manages to link Stand Strong into Super. Both Stand Strong and Low Strong can be linked into Super for Ken. So that Stand Strong has a lot more range than Low Strong, so it can catch a lot of people off guard. You can hit confirm both of them because they are links. Boss manager Landa Kraksa juggles there for the setup. Gets the regular regular throw. The regular throw builds up a ton of stun, which is why you'd want to go for that. Oh, roundhouse to catch you jumping back, or just another rush punch to kind of out prioritize a lot of moves. So basically, every time you block, uh, get hit by one of Makoto's rush punches, you end up in a very precarious situation. Very, very precarious situation. All right, right now, Boss getting in there right now. Nice, you see Ed walking back just a little bit to get Boss to whip that throw again. And Boss manages to land another throw, and he, Edma gets Boss to whip the Kraksa again, but Edma unable to punish properly. Manage, gets, throws Boss into the corner. Oh, nice meaty stand strong. That stand strong from Makoto, very powerful. And just decides to do stand fierce right into Seichus and Godanzuki. Takes the first round. Once again, Seichusen, very useful for the damage. Oftentimes, you're not going to be able to grab Ken. You ha Makoto has to grab the opponent with the Kraksa very close with her back to the edge of the screen to be able to land the Stand Fierce into Super Art 2. And so, Boss deciding here that it is not as likely to be able to land that on Ken. Right there is a distance, for example, where it would work. But uh, Boss going with Super Art 1 instead. Wanted to go with the damage. Nice read there from Ed. Knew he was going to go for that EX chop. Manages to block it. But right now, oh wow, he tried to catch the backdash. Really smart read there from Boss. Just wasn't quite far enough to catch him. Nice regular throw. And now Ed is nearing Dizzy right now. Boss using that stand fierce towards Fierce Attack to try to just land that hit for the Dizzy. Ed is out of the Dizzy danger now. Nice parry in the throw. Oh, wake up uppercut. Just clips the move, misses, doesn't hit with one of the knockdown moves, ends up flying into the air, and Boss takes it, able to punish Ed after he...
All right, here we go. We have Justin Wong on the left, Emphy on the right. Nice. Oh, wow. Justin just going right at it with those footsies. Chun-Li has a lot of high priorities, but nice carry in the throw from Emphy there. Trying to keep Justin in the corner, pressured. Got to set up those Aegis reflectors. But now Justin's actually managed to throw him into the corner, so now Justin's got Emphy in the corner. Right now, Justin just keeping him out. Oh, nice surprise charge tackle there, but just gets thrown right back into the corner. But you know, Urien is a great momentum changer. He just needs one little mix up into the Aegis Reflector can train all of her life, set up some unblockables. Justin, that's why he's playing so defensive right now, trying to keep him out. Doesn't want to have to deal with any of that. You can see him just zoning him out with those normal moves right now. Emphy trying to figure out a way to get in there, trying to use Urien's quick dash. He's in there, but not enough. Okay, he's got a sweep. What's he got from here? Wow, both players with their throws. And you see Justin just jump off the wall, get out of that corner. He just doesn't want to have to deal with that situation. Now Emphy had the last little bit of his life. Nice. Justin catches him with the surprise step kick there. Takes round one. Both. Both players sitting on full meter. Opening throw from Justin. Once again, Emphy. I mean, once he manages to get a sequence going, he can unleash so much damage thanks to that. To all, to the two supers, to the Aegis Reflectors he built up. Usually a good sequence of two Aegis Reflectors even builds up a third one. And Justin tried to super jump cancel that stand roundhouse into super. Failed there, and now Justin trying to get out after Emphy tried to set up the Aegis Reflector trap. Here we go with another one. Nice overhead block, and Emphy keeping him in that corner, knowing Justin's going to try to get out of that Aegis Reflector trap. Oh, wow. Surprise little low jab into headbutt from Emphy, and he's got Justin in the corner here. Justin trying to keep out. He's going to juggle off of that and get the low fierce from the Aegis Reflector. Nice play from Emphy there. You can see how dangerous that Aegis Reflector can really be. Nice. Wow, counter poke with stand fierce to punish Urien's low roundhouse. Urien's low roundhouse has a lot of recovery to it. And now just using that back fierce just to it's so much priority. Keeping Urien out. Keep them just filling each other out. Once again using that back fierce. Emphy really trying to find a way in there. Nice parry in the back fierce there to anti-air for Justin. Justin with a huge life lead, still sitting on two meters. We haven't seen Justin use any meter at all. I think this entire fight, no supers, no EXs, nothing. And here comes Empty, catches him with the sweep that time. And he's gonna go for a second Aegis Reflector. And did she just get stuff off the Aegis Reflector? That was some sick stuff. And Justin still sitting on his meter and wins this game against Empty without using a single bit of All right, Justin's taking game one. <laughs> Let's see if he actually uses any super meter this time. Nice little counter sweep there from Empty once again, using that parry into back fierce as anti-air. Good enough, that back fierce, when you hit the opponent out of the air, knocks him back really far. Nice Hazanchu right over that fireball. Catching him with the universal overhead. If he hasn't been able to get a lot of momentum here, Justin's been shutting him out very well. It's got to be very frustrating for Emphy to play against this. Now Emphy trapped in the corner. He's got to figure out a way out. Nice little poke with the stand strong there to control some space. Throwing that fireball, predicting Justin was going to jump, but no jump. Off of that uh, up fireball, he probably could have gotten a lot after that. And here we go, throw into Aegis Reflector setup. Tried to sweep, he had a success in that in the first round. It's a guessing game, high or low. And Justin, once again, every time he gets in the corner, he just jumps right out using the wall bounce. And now, nice counter there. Didn't even bother using the meter. Could have low forward supered him. Once again, could have low forward super. But choosing to conserve that meter, 
Not sure why. Justin obviously didn't need it in the last round, and he's gonna not in the last game, and he's not gonna need it in this round either. So far, Justin with three rounds in a row of not using any super meter. He's immediately getting empty into the corner with some throws and going for some carrot throws. You can see Justin being a little more aggressive. He, oh, what the surprise super there. And this is what, again, maybe that's why Justin hasn't been using it. <laughs> he just knew he was going to get thrown out of the super. Nice. Keeping the pressure on. Now he's got empty in the corner again. You see Justin backing out, giving him a little bit of space, but he's know he's got a lot of real estate to go back. So he's not too worried about it. And once again, has empty right back in the corner where he needs him. Nice! You that headbutt to go over and attack, and here we go with the Aegis Reflector setup, going for an unblockable! This is a huge chance for Empy to do lots of damage, going for another unblockable! Nice! Alright, like I said, you can get so much momentum going off of a nice Aegis Reflector trap. Not only that, but you see he's already built up almost enough meter for one Aegis Re for another Aegis Reflector. Sometimes a good sequence for Yurian allows him to do three Aegis Reflectors in a row with how much meter you can build up in those sequences. Empy and Justin tied in life right now. And Empy's got to figure out a way to take this round or else... Justin Wong will claim this victory. Oh, trying to get for a surprise throw. Maybe thought Justin was going to dash in again. And Justin just using that parry anti-air. See, the roundhouse doesn't knock the opponent as far away. Oh, wow. Just went for a surprise low fierce. That could have led to a lot of damage there. Sometimes you throw that out if you suspect your opponent's going to try to uh, go for a surprise parry. The low fierce has a slower time to come out. Catch people off guard, and here comes Empy with some mix-ups. But Justin ducking right under that Aegis Reflector, so he doesn't have to worry about any unblockable setup. I know Empy with no life. Justin, oh, here we go. Huge opportunity for Empy here. Nice overhead, and he's still got Justin trapped in the corner. And he's going to go for it one more time. Oh, and just as successfully blocks it, gets the throw off, and takes the victory 2-0. Good stuff to Justin. Let's fight he made it? like gentle. Prepare to strike now. And now Rom and Coco Jean going at it, immediately starting off with Rom in the corner. Nice little stand roundhouse there from Rom there. I guess he read the backswing blow and was able to hit it before it came back around with a nice long range move. Rom right now with a slight light lead, using low fierce as anti-air. Actually very effective that upswing of the arm that Yang does actually can hit above his head if you can do it early enough. Coco Jean trying to hit the dive kick out of the air with the stand roundhouse. The dive kicks do hit low to the feet, so if you have a straight move that punches at chest level, you can oftentimes beat the dive kick, such as Yuri and Stand Strong. And that's what Coco Jean tried to do with that stand roundhouse to punish that dive kick. Unsuccessful, and Rom takes round one from Coco Jean. Nice throw there. Oh, see, once again, walking up, trying to get Rom to flinch, and Rom flinched. Coco Jean right now just putting a very strong amount of pressure on Rom. Rom taking a huge punishment right now, a huge beating in the corner. Oh no, and the, the palm combo did not reach. Last hit whiffed, giving Coco Jean the opportunity to take that. Ooh. Nice low forward into Mantis Slash there from Rom. Of course, Mantis Slash, uh, often called Rekka's, just because it's very similar to Fei Long's attack. That's very tricky there from Yang. He's actually one of the only characters that can do that. Uh, he cancels his jump forward into the dive kick. He's got that chain combo in the air. You saw the first time he did it, Koko Jin sniffed it out and blocked it. So the next time, Rom actually jumped and did not do the dive kick, and Rom actually takes game one from Koko Jin. Coco Jean actually going for a character switch. Known very much for his Dudley, he is deciding to go instead with Ken. Let's see if this, can, this change actually pays off for him. 
Once again, we said Rom has played a lot of Dudleys, so he's probably very familiar with fight. Baits out the uppercut there. Oh wow, just going straight for a Mantis Slash right there. Mantis Slash has to be parried high, low forward has to be parried low. And that's the kind of meaty mix-up that you have to have for your character. You have to have the, the, the must be parried high, must be parried low mix-up. It's actually one of the reasons why, you know, certain characters can be considered very low tier. 12, a very uh, notable character who's very low tier, has no way to get you to block, to, to force you to parry high into a combo that leads into super. And that's actually the main weakness that he had. Yang actually not having that problem, able to do low forward and a Mantis Slash, able to do the stand strong, stand fierce, palm, chain combo that he has. Oh wow. Now unlike a lot of, unlike every other Street Fighter game, while you are blocking a combo, if you stop blocking in the middle of it, you will not con continue to automatically block. And I like Rom there. Oh, they should be able to do it. And Rom takes it from Coco Jean. Once again, there is no absolute guard in third strike. Let's see if Justin decides to go with Chun Li. Yep, sticks with Chun Li. And of course, goes with Hoyo Kusen. And of course, Higa sticks with Kasumi Suzaku. And here we go. Once again, they're just trying to pull each other out, staying at that outside of the range of each other's pokes. A very, a very careful dance and a, a lot of very careful distance measuring there. Nice parry there from Justin. Once again, Higa using those kunais in the air to alter his jump attacks. Timing. Using that little slide, the slide does reach a little further and uh, hits low than her regular low forward. Oh, nice parry there and a punish for Higa. Tries to go for the overhead, Justin blocks that. Yeah. Justin does have Higa in the corner, but Higa manages the high jump right out of there. Of course, in this game, every character has a high jump. So every character has a regular jump, and every character can hit down right before jumping to perform a high jump. Once again, using that knife to throw out the timing. Nice from Justin there. Read that. I think, I'm not sure, but I mean, he, he jumped straight in the air and had that punish all ready to go. Takes round one versus Higa. Nice stand fierce counter there. Using the head stomp there to just kind of throw off the attack and also prevent Higa from getting under him. But Higa able to punish it on his landing, throw him. Nice use of that standing forward there. And you see a lot of times players, you know, when they get success from something like that, they do it all the time. So Justin hit Higa out of the air with that stand forward. And Higa immediately jumped again, ready to parry it. And Justin not falling for that bait, not throwing out the standing forward. A lot of times, you know, in fighting games, when you have success, you have to learn to move away from that success because your opponent's ready to counter it and read it. And just speaking of reading, once again, a great read from Justin there to catch that uh, uh, Ibuki teleport dash move. Ibuki can actually, with the command move, cancel a lot of her normal moves into that little quick dash. And Justin punishing that slide with low forward into the Hoyokusen. He goes still with a tiny bit of life left, needs to figure out a way to get in there right now. Justin almost at a full meter. If he gets that, he can actually try to punish Higa with the super. Doesn't need to. So he counter pokes Higa for to, to take game. And it looks like Justin has adjusted a little bit here against Higa. I wonder if he took some, uh, basically learned some stuff from watching against the Takedo. And now he has Justin trapped in the, uh, Justin has Higa trapped in the corner right now. Nice blocking there from Justin. You see Higa going with the overhead right into the low attack. Just a little too far. The spin kick did not connect with the last hit. It would have been huge because it would have given Higa a knockdown and some more ga uh, mind games and met pressure games to play against Justin. You see Justin knows Higa likes to do those EX kunais in the air, so he's not trying to go for a lot when he jumps. He just blocks. He's just waiting for those EX kunais right now. Justin actually managing to catch up just in, in this round. Oh, you see that? He tried to punish with low jab. Didn't come out fast enough. Ibuki actually managing to low to low block in time. And right now, Justin down a lot of life. Doesn't have any meter either. Unable to make the comeback in that round. Higa takes round one of game two. 
Let's see if Justin Wong can recoup that momentum right now. He goes right now decidedly on the offense here. Nice parries from Justin there. The nice thing about parries, not only do you get the punish, but it's such a momentum turner too. That's what makes parries so important. Nice throw there from Justin. And Justin going with that stand roundhouse, catching the back jump attempt. Throwing out the stand fierce, just to control space once again. Catches Higa, trying to jump away once again. And now Justin Wong is at match point versus Higa. Remember, Higa did knock Justin Wong into loser's bracket pretty convincingly earlier in the tournament. So Justin Wong making a lot of adjustments here. Let's see if Higa can counter those adjustments with his own adjustments. Nice throw fake. You see him dash right up into instant air through Sami Suzaku. Gets another one right now, willing to burn that meter just to get that damage. This is the last round. There's no reason to save all that meter. Now, Justin's got a long road ahead of him, but he's got two Hoyokusens. All he needs to do is get a sequence of two of them in a row. Very possible because after you land the first one, Chun-Li gets a lot of mix-up opportunities. It's actually something we've seen Amir, who was also in this tournament, do a lot. Land two Hoyokusens in a row. Let's see if Justin can actually do that here. Oh, huge opportunity there. Low forward and the super. Probably didn't think it was going to connect. And now Justin's got Higa in the corner. Here we go. Here's the game. Am I going to low forward and the super or am I going to Kara throw you? And Higa manages to get out the standing forward into spin kicks and takes Justin Wong out that round to take. We are now tied one to one. Great comeback there from Higa. Great readjustment. And now this is for all the marbles. Loser of this goes home and winner of this keeps moving on and advances. Nice use of that low strong once again. Much better range for footsies with, for Chun-Li. Also hits low. But uh, it cannot be canceled in the supers, so not uh, it's not going to get you any more damage than just the hit. But you know it keeps your opponent honest. It's basically you would use it the same way that Higa is using uh, Ibuki's low forward as well, just kind of as a means to get your opponent to be a little more honest with their footsie game. And then nice from Justin there, baiting out some attempts there with that stand roundhouse, managing to land the throw afterwards. Justin gets the throw in there right now. Once again trying to use that, and once again walking up, doing the little dance there, and actually, you know, smart play from Higa there to throw out the low roundhouse to try to change the timing, but Justin still managed to parry it instead. You know, Higa probably was expecting Justin to expect the low forward, so he threw out the stand roundhouse to throw off the parry timing, but uh, Justin still managed to parry it and was able to finish that off. Justin once again back at match point, using that standing roundhouse there to counter out of the air. Nice. Stand Fierce reaches so far and punches out of the sky. Pretty effective anti-air. And right now, Justin just using that Standing Fierce as a means to keep Higa honest right now. Higa trying to get out of the corner right now. He's gotten a little bit out, but once again, Justin now, just with a concentration of those Stand Fierces, Justin manages to get through under that kunai. Tries to go for a throw, and Higa's now got Justin in the corner. The table to turn. Great stand jab there. Just to punish the hop kick. Higa still with Justin's has Justin with his back to the corner. This is a huge position, strong position for Higa, but Higa with not much life left to play with. So he's got to figure out, he goes for basically a surprise slide attack, not gonna reach, and then Justin gets the throw in, and Justin gets the gets revenge against Higa, eliminates Higa, and moves on in the tournament. All right, Tokido going back to Yurian and Aegis Reflector. Seems to like that match better than Chun-Li versus Boss. Boss, of course, using Makoto and sticking with the Seichusa and the Godanzuki. Gets Tokido with the Karaksa. Not all characters can be juggled by another Hayate in the corner, but Yurian is one of those characters. Boss right now just getting right in there. Tokido's dizzy. Once again, Fierce into EX Hayate into one more. He takes round one. Boss once again getting Tokido right into the corner. Nice tech roll there from Tokido to get out of that unblockable situation. Of course, you have to tech roll by hitting down the instant you hit the ground. Nice from Boss there to try to keep the pressure going, try to get himself out of the... I'm sorry, it's nice from Tokita there to try to get out of the corner right now. And boss manager to land the Karaksa. Here we go, what's the mix-up? Oh, nice throw. And here's, the, here's Tokita's big chance. Nice block from Boss. Twice, actually, blocked the overhead. But then manages to get hit again. And here goes Tokito. 
Oh wow, you see that stand jab whiff right there. Oh, not enough to chip, but still manages to take that round. But I like Tokido though, throwing up that little stand jab whiff, getting a boss to think high, and then Tokido manages to get that low roundhouse on him. Boss once again just getting right in there, getting Tokido right in the corner. Nice low for sweep. Oh, he thought he had hit him, but it missed. All right, here we go. Unblockable setup. Tokido using the the knee drop method as opposed to MP's uh, charge partitioning method. And right now he's got Boss kind of stuck in the corner behind that Aegis reflector wall. Ooh. Nice block there of the EX overhead chop. Oh wow! It's coming right down the wire and Tokido just takes it with a quick EX charge. Even if Boss had blocked it, he would have died through chip damage. His only way to escape it after he blocked the first hit would have been to come out with a red parry on the second hit if the first one had, was not going to kill him right away. It's very interesting because Boss has started off every round very strong, you know, getting Tokido into the corner very quickly. But, you know, give credit to Tokido for playing very patient, staying in the corner, not panicking, and then finding his opportunity. And here we go, Boss with, speaking of opportunities, Boss landing a lot of Karaksas. Here we go again. And that should be a dizzy right there, and that'll be the round. Boss taking that. One of the things that makes Makoto so deadly is her ability to stun you so quickly. Oh wow, nice little stand fierce there. Makoto's low forward is actually a really good poke against Yurian, but Yurian's stand fierce basically keeps that up. And that's why you see Takito throwing a lot of stand forwards and he sets up the unblockable. Oh, on time there and wake up! Say choose and go down the key. Now once again, boss with Tokido in the corner. Tokido, not quite with the full meter, but now he's got a meter for the Aegis Reflector, so he can somehow get in the situation here. Nice! You see him do the Chariot Tackle into Aegis Reflector, into Immediate Chariot Tackle, trying to catch him when he's jumping. And you saw that boss got hit by that, and once again, to end the round, you see Tokido using that whiff stand jab into low attack, just to get a reaction out of boss. And here comes Boss with the Karaksas. And a standing fierce mix-up. And right away, Tokido dizzy. Less than nine seconds into the round. And Tokido almost dead already. And Boss takes it with a perfect winning game two. Total one of the scariest characters. She just basically is a walking 50-50. Just pretty much everything she does leaves you in that guessing situation. Throws or hits, and it's, you know, basically if you do not have enough time to gather your senses, she can pretty much run right through you before you even know what happened. Nice pair from Tokido there, unable to throw Boss into the corner, however. And this round is beginning the same way we've seen all the rounds begin, with Boss getting Tokido right into the corner right away. You see some Hayate feints. And this should be a dizzy right here. Once again, Makoto gets so much damage. Boss now at match point. So Kido's got to figure out a way to get past this. And he's going to be sent to the loser's bracket. Nice attack there. And you see, once again, all these mix-ups. After every one of those things, there's a mix-up for Makoto. After the Hayate, after the Strong, after the Kenexa. It's just it's nothing but mix-ups after mix-ups. And he's got it. He landed the Hayate into Seichusen Godanzuki. And Boss is your winner's bracket grand final. Match number 29, this is Losers Finals. We have Tokido versus Justin Wong. Tokido, once again, sticking with Yurian. And a lot of people may remember that at Evolution 2002, these two faced each other at UCLA in one of the most famous, in basically, U.S. might have been one of the first times they had seen a Yurians with those unblockable setups. It was definitely a very surprising match in that 5-on-5 five five special there. And here they are. 
basically eight, eight, nine years later playing the same characters in Third Strike in the same game. Very cool stuff. Great defense there from Justin, but not that time to block that. And you see Justin using the off the wall and the head stomp to get out of the corner. He wasn't going to make it over Tokido, so he knew to use the head stomp to get out of the corner so he doesn't have to deal with the Aegis Reflector pressure. Tokido now going to try to get Justin Wong right back into the corner. And Justin with a good lead. You see how that he's mixing between stand strong and the stand forward uh, anti airs to change up his mix up timing, make it harder to parry. And here we go, Tokido with the lockdown. And what's he got? He has no more supers left for the Aegis Reflector, so he's just going to run away and try to build some meter. What has Justin got right here? Let's see if Justin actually can take this round or if Tokido is going to be able to get away. He's just going to try to. Oh! Throws out the fireball. Justin thought he might have been able to block it and live, but not enough life. Takes the damage from the fireball and loses round one. Tokido winning round one. Nice parry there from Tokido. Managed to land the launch combo off of the low fierce. Justin Wong mixing between throws and stand roundhouses once again. Very tough mix up to deal with. And I like Justin. He parried and used that standing jab to punch him out of the air to get the seat to get the pressure going. And great play for there from Tokido. But Justin Wong still manages to get him. There's that back fierce again with that huge priority box. And, but I mean this is the same thing we saw last round. Justin Wong with a huge life lead. But Yurian is the kind of character that does so much damage in chunks thanks to all of those Aegis Reflector setups. And there you see we had talked about earlier that low strong from Chun Li. Much, much better range than that low forward. If Justin had tried to go for a low forward, it probably would not have hit smart play from Justin there to use that low strong to be far enough to reach Yurian and punish Tokido to take round two. So now we are tied 1-1 here. Nice empty headbutt goes over low attacks and the headbutt misses which gives him that throw opportunity. Oh nice use of that upwards metallic sphere to catch Justin from jumping. Once again tried it but Justin that time smartly parried it and you can see right now Tokido with a huge life lead. Oh wow Justin hit him out of the air with low forward if he had cancelled in the super that probably would have been the end for Justin. Fortunate for him that he did not actually try to hit confirm that in the super. But Tokido with a huge life lead right now. Nice parry there. Oh, nice! As Yurian, you can actually throw out the Aegis Reflector as an upward angle. A smart play there from Tokido. Tokido taking game one. Smart play there from Tokido. Tokido taking game one. And this is still two out of three here in losers finals. And you know, we saw it so many times Justin Wong with a nice sizable life lead and then Tokido managing to make that comeback. That's the way Yurian rolls. He's got all those damaging setups and unblockables that basically just lead into themselves. So Yurian, a very momentum based character, never out of the fight, never have to be discouraged. Just take some smart mix-ups there. And Justin, you see, continually using that parry and the stand jab. He wants to jab him out of the air so we can keep pushing him back. Oh, wow. Good restraint there from Tokido to block some of those low forwards. Much lesser players would have flinched and gotten hit by that. Right now, you see a very high-level display of footsies right there. Justin Wong. Oh, that was a huge opportunity for Tokido. He dropped it there. And J Justin Wong walking up with the low short, catching Tokido. I think Tokido was expecting a throw attempt of some sort. Not caught by that. And Justin Wong that time daring to go for the throw. Nice little overhead counter. You see Justin jump straight up. Tokido was not worried about a jump attack on the way down. Just went for the overhead. Very brave play there, but very smart read at the same time from Tokido. Oh, here we go. Huge chance for a big combo. Oh, wow. And once again, right into the corner for another Aegis Reflector. And that should take this round. Almost. Now Tokido is basically trying to build meter. He knows he has a life lead, so he's just kind of trying to build as much meter as he can. And now Justin's trying to make the comeback here, but to no avail. I mean, that's kind of a win for Justin. He was forcing Tokido to finish him off so that he could not build any more meter. You see that Tokido's already built up another meter for an Aegis Reflector. 
uh, being after running away like that and, and whipping some of those normals. And here we go. Let's see what setups Tokido has. Nice universal overhead. Justin couldn't block it. And now Tokido using that Aegis Reflector as a free way to get in. And here we go. More mix-ups. And he's just smacking him with overheads over and over and over again. Oh, huge opportunity there from Justin. Missed it, but here we go. Lands the Hoyokusen combo. Let's see what kind of mix-ups Justin has here. Nice tech there from Tokido. This is match point for Tokido. Nice throw there from Justin. Tokido probably expecting low forward, but you know what? Tokido will take that throw over getting hit by low forward any day. Great parry there, but nobody was able to come away with that. And once again, another great parry. Tokido dropped his little punish there. Oh, and Tokido dashes in and takes out Justin Wong. So once again, this is three out of five, grand finals. Tokido coming from loser's bracket, going with Yuri and Makoto just as before. And last time we saw these two fight against each other, it was pretty much the same story pretty much every round. It was Boss getting Tokido in the corner very quickly, and then either basically finishing him off or Tokido managing to land one good sequence for huge damage. And here we see once again, starting the round the exact same way. With Boss just getting right in there, keeping Tokido trapped in the corner. All Tokido is looking for that one back throw, that one opportunity to get out of the corner. He makes it, but gets caught by the low short into the Hayate. And gets dizzy off of it. Boss takes round one. Makoto definitely very strong. Originally, uh, the tier list had it so that uh, Chun-Li, Yun, and Ken were the top three characters. But recently, it's become the opinion of a lot of top players that Makoto, that Mako Makoto is actually the third best character after Chun-Li and Yun, and has just gotten above Ken in terms of ranking. And you can see it here right now. Boss taking game one very Once again, Chun-Li's normal moves very good at out-prioritizing Makoto. Her back fierce beats a lot of Makoto's moves, so Makoto's have to be very reactionary and very quick. Try to find out when Chun-Li whiffs that back fierce to potentially just dash in and try to punish her in between back fierces. And right now you see Tokido already with a strong start. Against Yuri and we saw how Boss was able to get him in the corner every time. Tokido managing to stay out of the corner. I mean, he just got in there, but gets out right away. The follow-ups to Chun-Li's Hoyokusen, very character-specific. Certain characters you can get the double head stomp, some characters it's better off getting the double jumping fierce. It's very dependent on the character that you're fighting against. Nice parry in the stand roundhouse from Tokido, and he lands low forward, hit confirms it in the super. Basically a very, very late super cancel. Not quite a late, it's actually a super cancel, but you can super cancel that move very late. And you can see how different it is that Tokido is actually getting Boss into the corner as opposed to Boss getting Tokido's Yurian in the corner. Nice dash up into Kraksa. And right now, Boss getting right in there using those universal overheads to slowly push Tokido into the corner. He's not worried if Tokido ends up blocking them because he keeps pushing him into the corner, but Tokido managed to get a parry in there, combo into Hoyokusen, and takes game one. And you see Tokido looking back and talking to Kokujin a little bit, getting some advice right now. It seems very much like uh, he is rooting for, for Boss and Kokujin is rooting for Tokido or something. <laughs> we have factions here from Team Japan. Once again, this is Grand Final. Oh! You see the mix-ups there, the low sweep, and then all of a sudden he follows up with a Stan Ferris instead. And here we go. One thing I do want to know is that we talked about it earlier that Boss was always using Super Art 1, but now he's using the Abari Tosami because in this particular matchup, if he grabs Chun-Li in the right place, it's pretty much instant kill. One Karaksa that combos into the Abari Tosami means victory for Makoto. Unfortunately, he's too close to the corner wall to be able to get that in there, but Chun-Li very close to being busy, and that should do it right there. 
course, Chun Li, another one of those characters that can be comboed by EX Hayate into a second Hayate. And now Boss is up two to one. This is game point for him. This is tournament game, I should say, for him. Tokido decides to stick with Chun Li, having far more success with Chun Li winning that one game as opposed with Yurian. Nice, there was a Kara throw. You saw how far that range was. And you saw Tokido mixing it up. Kara throw in the low roundhouse instead. Nice text from Boss. Boss is trying to get out of the corner so he can get Tokido trapped there. Tokido using that low jab to get out of there. And actually, it sounds like they're all rooting for for uh, Boss here right now. Both Japanese players excited whenever Boss lands some of those tricks with Makoto. And right now, Boss is building a little bit of meter up right now. Oh, and Tokido's gotten in with the throw. He's got Boss in the corner. You ah, so far for that character. He went for another one, actually, but uh, Boss actually uh, countered it. And here we go. What kind of mix-up does Boss have? Oh, nice EX bird kick from Tokido. Yeah, the, the Kara throws are really, really good. They increase your throw range by maybe over twice the distance, but, the, but you're sacrificing startup time. You basically lose one or two frames of startup time for the normal move to come out before you get the throw. So you get distance for a little loss of speed. Oh, that was a trade there. Otherwise, Tokido would have comboed into the super. Tokido, once again, trying to get Boss in the corner. Here we go. Now, what kind of mix-up does Tokido have after this? Oh wow, he went for that jab with mix up again. And Tokido takes game four, and we are tied at 2 2 in the grand. About to say, it was Boss about to change characters? It looks like he's going to. He's busting out the Yun. He's busting out the Ganajin. I mean, Chun Li has no bad matchups in this game, but Yun would probably be considered the closest thing. This is an even fight for them. Chun Li can be locked down very badly by by the Ganajin pressure. We saw Boss there leading off the Ganajin activation with the sweep. Once again, throwing off the timing a little bit. People always expecting a much faster move. And here we go, shoulder into Ganajin. Such a good way to start off the trap. Great blocking from from Tokido, managing to avoid that whole entire mix up there. Ooh. Nice! Surprise shoulder attack there. Shoulder tackle from Boss. Taking the first round. He is at tournament point right now. If he wins the next round, if he wins this round or the next round, he takes the tournament. And Tokido trying to get in there, but Boss walking backwards, staying out of Chun Li's throw range. Unfortunately, Ch although Chun Li's carrot throw is actually really far, it actually cannot be done off of close forward also another thing too another huge advantage <laughs> another huge advantage that uh that yun has against chun li is that if he is in ganajin and chun li's in the corner he can land the zempo tension launch with standing forward dash under into the palm and keep chun li in the corner and this is it one hit away for Boss. Oh, and Boss takes the tournament. Boss is your grand champion. And Tokido finishes second. Prepare to strike now. Rom, uh, of course, a very well-known Yang player, probably one of the best Yangs in the United States. Um, he's been winning a lot of the NorCal tournaments uh, using Yang in third strike. So, good stuff. Nice surprise wake up with the low short into the EX Mantis Slashes, catching him with a command grab, getting some more in there. Kinetics, of course, using Dudley here. He's just got to get his own mix-ups in there. Yang does not have a lot of life, so it connects and just get a sequence of probably two uh, corkscrew blow combos. He can take the round, but Bomb is going to take it with a nice little uh, poke with low forward into the Mantis Slashes. 
Kinetics going for a surprise low roundhouse there to catch Rom. Nice, Rom linking Stan Strong into Stan Short, cancel the combos into the EX Mantis slashes. And catching again with that low forward. And then another command grab, Rom with a huge momentum, with the momentum hugely in his favor. Kinex has got him in the corner here, so it's a huge opportunity. There's one overhead into... Oh, again! You see that stand short mix-up into the overhead there. Great mix-ups there! Wow! What a great sequence there for Kinetics. That was textbook Dudley right there. Getting you trapped in the corner, catching you with that sequence, and mixing up between high and lows, and comboing into the corkscrew blow every single time. Now Kinetics with the momentum. Great stuff there. And linking once again. That is the advantage of that corkscrew blow super combos in so many situations. Choosing not to do it off of that uh, ducking into upper there. You could super cancel that as well. Kinetics chose to save the meter. And now Rom going right in there. Are we going to see another comeback? Wow. And he's so close to Dizzy, but it doesn't matter. He's going to die before he can fall Dizzy. And Rom takes it with a nice little low strong. Two great that. comebacks there from both players. Alright, this is uh, MP going up against Kinetics. Kinetics uh, using Dudley. Nice little casual match here between two NorCal players. If I'm not mistaken. And right now, Kinetics is going right at him in the corner, keeping MP trapped in there. Going for Great Rush out. Nice! Sniffed out that whip headbutt. And finished him off with the, with the super. Right there, and like I said, this is a casual match. I think these two are just having a little fun with each other. Willing to just blow that whole meter to finish MP off. Now here comes the mix-ups with the Aegis Reflector. Nice, caught him with the overhead. He's gonna get the juggle there and go right into another Aegis Reflector mix-up. Nice counter throw there from Kinetics. And you see Kinetics just backdashing away, doesn't want any piece of that Aegis Reflector. Wow, that jumping roundhouse there. Ooh. <laughs> nice. Look at that. Countering him with the upwards fireball after pairing some some of the last uppercut of the super. Cool stuff. Nice flashy stuff there from MP. Now they tied 1-1. One, one. MP is going to go for Aegis Reflector mix-ups. Nice. Ooh, Glow Roundhouse getting hit by the Aegis Reflector before he could actually connect against Yuria. And here we've got that mix-up again. Nice parry there from MP, and this is going to be an unblock. Oh, it looks like he messed up the setup a little bit. Trying to use charge partitioning to set up the uh, unblockable for Yuria. Uh, charge partitioning, a technique that allows you to charge moves while moving. Very powerful technique, especially for Yuria. Not enough meter for an Aegis Reflector. But he manages to take it anyway. Good stuff there from Emphy. Alright, Edma going with Ken. This is just a nice little casual fight here between the two players. Right now, Edmond going right away, trying to get Empty in the corner, trapping him in there. Continuing to throw him in the corner repeatedly, and went for two throws and then went for the low short. Tried to bait Empty into uh, touching a button there, and then getting another throw in there. Right now, Edmond doing a great job keeping Empty in the corner, but if there's anything to know about Yurian, all it takes is one mistake, and here we go. Going for the unblockable setup, and he catches him with it. Like I said, one mistake, and all the momentum goes to Yurian. Empty takes round one after a strong start from Ken and you can see one of the advantages that Yurian has is that he has so much life took a lot of damage there from Ken but still came away with half his life at the end of that round and so Yurian with empty with a huge uh, momentum shift there in the first round and right now Ed's got him in the corner again but you can see how dangerous Yurian is that sometimes it doesn't matter. MV trying to go for the Aegis set up there to get the sweep to push uh, Ed closer to the corner so he can go for some more mix-ups. Willing to sacrifice the meter on one Aegis Reflector just for positioning. 
Sometimes that positioning can be so important. Nice red parry there on the second hit of that EX Fireball. Oh, wow, he actually parried that EX Fireball, was expecting it. And now Edma going right back in there with that throw. Once again, two throws into the low short. That's the exact same sequence he used last time. <laughs> nice. Got the low jab parried, but Edma smartly just kept mashing on the low jab, countering Emphy's low fierce, knowing that low fierce is going to be too slow to come out. Not sure if Emphy would have had a move fast enough to counter that second low jab. Oh, wow. Not sure what Ed tried there. He did an empty jump. Maybe he was doing an option select jump with a parry and then went for something when he landed. He didn't quite get it. Nice. Ed getting that. Getting empty to land on the EX Fireball. Um, very good. Gets a knockdown. Good positioning there. And Ed gets away from that Aegis Reflector set up there from empty. Nice block from empty From the surprise EX Fireball. A lot of times the EX Fireball is just there to control space. And right now, Ed is just zoning out with those normal moves and once again using that surprise EX Fireball. Caught him that time. So Emphy's got to find a way to make a comeback, but once again, Yuri is so capable of that. Nice blocking from Emphy, but got caught by that low 40. He's down to almost no life. Ed is just smashing jab right now, tempting Emphy to do something. And here comes, oh, and he hits him with a low 4 before getting hit by the stages reflector. You can see him get hit almost at the last second. Right. Two of Jap Japan's strongest players here in third strike, Tokido using chun -Li. Tokido, of course, one of the strongest Japanese players in pretty much any fighting game he touches. Tokido known for his abuki, one of the best abukis, if not the best abuki in Japan. Oh, right over Chun-Li. Chun-Li crouching is so low, but right under that hop kick from Higa. Tokido taking round one. This is a nice little casual match between the players. Nice. Low forward cancel the super. Very late cancel. That's why it's so hit confirmable. You can cancel so much later than it looks. Almost while the leg is retracting. And that's why it's able to hit confirm off of one move. Normally you need at least a good sequence of about two moves to be able to properly hit confirm. But that low forward can be canceled so late for Chun-Li that that's what allows her to do that. Nice surprise kunai there to catch Tokido's low forward. You see Tokido's just fishing with that low forward. He just wants to land another low forward into Super. And Higa using it to make a huge comeback, but then Tokido... Wow, great reaction there from Tokido to Super through the EX Kunai, and Tokido takes it. Alright, nice little casual match here from Higa. Going up against Kinetics. Not sure if Kinetics has fought a lot of Ibuki players before. Ibuki, not a very common character in Third Strike. Oh, here's a huge opportunity for Higo. Doesn't quite take it. Kinetics now trapped in the corner, but he's jumped out and managed to get Higa there. And Higa not connecting uh, the combo properly there. I think he went with too slow of the, of the spin kicks there. Wow, they're just <laughs> jumping all around each other right now. It's like a game of leapfrog. Higa trying to get in there. Nice surprise sweep. Caught Kinetics off guard. And Kinetics catching with that towards Fierce. And just trying to chip him from almost a screen away. And Kinetics almost had that parry going. He started parrying, you saw it, but then just got hit with the tail end of that. Actually really surprised that that super reached that far. Good measuring of distance there on Higa's part to know that that was close enough to catch with that. As long as he jumped high enough. And nice, using a hop kick into the knife super. Wow, trying to use the hop kick again. Surprise hop kick. It's actually the best way to make that hop kick from uh, the Hien from Ibuki actually safe. And now he's just going to chip him to death. Oh, the Kinetic's got a few of those parries in there at first. Higa taking it with the knife super. Fire is ready. 
engage. All right, Tokido versus Rom. Tokido using Chun Li on the right. Rom using Yang on the left. Nice red parry in between those two mantis slash hits. And Tokido doing an excellent job just keeping Rom out with those back fierces, catching the dive kicks. And you even see right before he punched for the round. He whiffed one fierce just to build a little extra meter. Smart stuff there from Tokido. Oh, wow. Thought he caught him with a low four. Didn't quite get him. And a smart play there from Rom to use the command grab to punish to get Tokido into the corner. Using a lot of his meter for those EX Mantis slashes, but you can see it's paying off. Nice stand roundhouse to get out of that pressure situation, but Rom actually reacted properly. Caught him with the regular throw. Stunned him and took him out with the palm. Great round for Rom there. Good stuff. Good stuff. All right, let's see if Tokido can keep Rom out again. But using the surprise Mantis Slashes, you get five of them, so it's easy to hit confirm. You can do one, two, three, and then just stop and space them out so the opponent's scared to touch buttons after blocking them. So even if they see him get blocked, you can get away with a lot of things in Rom. Getting very close to getting Tokido dizzy once again. The great corner pressure sequence there, another surprise, EX Mantis Slash, and Rom takes it from Tokido with two rounds in a row to end it. Alright, this is Sanchez on the left, using Alex, of course, and Tokido on the right, going with Yurian. We've seen Tokido uh, go with uh, Yurian and with Chun Li. And you notice right there that Sanchez was able to juggle uh, the knee drop after the low fierce. That only works if it hits once and only if it's the second hit. Normally you can't juggle after that, only in that very specific situation. Nice grab there from Sanchez. Trying to do it again. Nice overhead once again. Oh no, here we go. Low fierce. This is a huge opportunity for Tokido. Getting the pressure in the corner. Throwing out the stand jab. Sanchez blocked it high, but then quickly throwing out that low forward. The stand jab was to make it look like he was going for the overhead. So Sanchez stood up and blocked the jab and then just got hit by the surprise low forward. Not sure if Sanchez was expecting a parry, and that's why he canceled. And actually, Tokido did that very much on purpose there, that charge to hit him with the back side of his shoulder to launch a Sanchez right back into the corner. Another one of those uh, high-level tactics here that you learn once you've played third strike a lot and get used to a lot of situations. And Tokido, once again with the Aegis Reflexor mix-up to take that game. Alright, we have here Bach from Japan, one of the best Makoto players, going up against Derek Neal, none other than the producer of Third Strike Online himself, going to try to test his medal against uh, one of these, uh, one of the top Japanese Makoto players. Off to a decent start, oh, nice parry off of the Iakate, but doesn't quite get a punish off of it. Nice dash up in the throw for Bach. Ooh, nice parry once again on that stand fierce, but I don't think he was expecting that follow-up Hayate there. And then a dash into Karasta, and he's going to get the EX Hayate off of that. Ooh, misses with the fierce uppercut. And now Boss has him back into the corner here. Ooh, nice! You see him do the, uh, the, the, the Kara Karasta there. If he had the setup with the cord strong, which pushes him at just the right distance so that he can whip the stand short, but the stand short pushes him close enough so that he can actually cancel it, you know, even though it doesn't hit, into the Kar Karaksa and grab at the right range. And Derek is just going for a random... He just went for the combo, it looks like, even off of the... Even after Boss blocked it, Boss looked like he tried to uh, red parry. He got one red parry and then got hit by the rest of it. And Glorious there with a nice low strong hit confirmed into Shippu. And he does it again. Nice. Good stunt there from Glorious. Now, that low strong is a hit confirmed into the Shippu because you're linking it. It's not actually a cancel. It's just low strong linked into it, which gives you enough time. And here goes Boss gonna... Oh. Uh, I thought he was going to link into the uh, Shaken Sudan's key. 
after connecting with the Hayate to start the round, but it looks like he's saving the meter. And he seems like he's doing it. Oh, wow! Harry loads her, and there's the thing you can go down to the key. <laughs> and Boss takes it from Derek with a perfect... Can he do that to the producer of this game? I don't know. Get ready to die. Ready? Go. Yeah. Oh. Alright, Shiro going with his uh, original character that we've seen him use. He was very famous for using Yurian at EVO 2002 in the 5 versus 5. Oh, nice yeah. double parry there from Tokido. Getting that juggle with the quick Aegis Reflector. Uh, if you hit, if you do the Aegis Reflector with two punches, he will actually throw the shield up instead of uh, straight. You can actually control the distance with the three different buttons, but if you hit more than one button at a time, you get the up one, which hits a lot faster. It hits right away, so you can actually get combos like that with a quick juggle. All right, and Tokido taking round one. Nice parry there from uh, from Amir. Amir now trying to get in there with those pokes. And Tokido just doing a very good job right now, keeping Amir at bay. And then finding his opportunities to get in. Using that standing fierce just to try to hit uh, Chun-Li. It just has good priority. It's not an overhead, even though he chops down like that. It's just a high priority move that beats out a lot of other attacks. I like Amir using that stand jab as anti-air. And oh, huge opportunity for Tokido off of that low fierce. He's going to get another Aegis Reflector set up. Just a perfect distance there. You can see Amir just trapped in the corner. And he built up enough meter for yet another one. Nice throw there from Amir. He's got an opportunity. He's still got two meters. I've seen Amir make huge comebacks with two super meters in a row, and he went for it. Didn't hit confirm it. Wasn't going to connect, and Tokido counters with the EX chariot tackle and takes it. Prepare to strike now. Justin drawing a very difficult first round matchup here. Has to go up against Higa from Japan. Using an unusual character, Ibuki. Not a lot of players probably very familiar with Ibuki. Nice counter sweep there from Higa. Oh, and her overhead didn't quite, quite get the combo off there though. Nice punish there after the parry. Good tech there from Higa as well. After Justin walked under him. Wow, a little surprise head stomp. Now he's just going to try to do some chip, not enough, and Justin Perry, the last one, tried to punish. Uh, Ibuki is pretty safe after that super, so that's why Justin went for that final parry there to see if he could punish him. He's just going to try to chip Justin to death. Justin going for those parries to see if he uh, to see if he could actually try to red parry and escape that was unsuccessful. You saw him just basically walk into the super and uh, get hit by the rest of it. Now Justin. Nice, using that jump fierce to counter uh, air to air battle there versus Higa. Nice throw there from Justin. He's got Higa in the corner and he has two meters. But Higa playing very careful right now. Very, very smart. Not risking too much. You see, he's just trying to bait Justin out. I think he's uh, expecting Justin to try to super through the kunai. And he's just jumping straight up and not doing anything. Justin sniffed it out that time and caught him with it. And wow, turn around super from the air to catch Justin from the other side, throwing the knife one direction and the super in the other. Interesting stuff, and wow, using that little teleport dash there from Mabuki to continue applying pressure. Oh, and he's just gonna go for chip once again, and like I said, unable to punish, not even with Chun-Li's really, really fast super art too. Justin, once again, still sitting on those two meters, and he can't seem to get any momentum right now. Higa just doing a very good job keeping Justin out. Not letting Justin get any, any way in there. And once again, Justin's going to have to go for the parries. Otherwise, he would have been chipped to death. And Higa takes that game. Good stuff from Higa. All right, we've got a nice little SoCal versus SoCal match here between Arliath and Sanchez. 
Who play is very well known for playing during the Family Fun Ran Bats in Southern California. Sanchez with a, with a good start right now. Has a huge life lead. Catches with a surprise elbow dash. Nice parry there, but just not enough. Sanchez takes it with a quick stand strong to the face. All right, round two. Wow, opening with super jump jab, high jump jab, interesting stuff there. And uh, you see that EX flash chop there from nice grab with the power bomb but the EX flash chop so important, which is why it's so good for Alex players to actually use super art two. Gives them a lot more meter for that EX flash chop. Very important for Alex's arsenal. Chip Douglas, mostly uh, not as well-known player from Northern California, using Dudley, going up against Mike Z's unorthodox Makoto. Mike Z always going with the gold Makoto. For the most part, it's always best for Makoto to go with Super Art 1 or 2. Mike Z always going with the uh, very different choice of going with Super Art 3. Nice. Mix up there. Oh wow, look at that sequence right there. Low, high, and threw Mike out of something. One of his EX moves, not sure which one. And here we go with the mix up using the rose. The rose is actually a great way to set things up right there. As you can see, using it to lock Mike Z down so he could try to trip him with that super. Good stuff from Chip. <laughs> chip with the chip win. Nice mix ups there. Catching with that low jab and then going right in there for the dash. Went for the Karakraksa. Didn't quite get it. Now Chip Douglas with the momentum here. Hot Makoto standing with the overhead. Otherwise, he would have been able to link it into the super. Oh, here we go. Using the invincibility of that to parry. And now Makoto cannot block during the super art. And Chip knowing that, so he's just going right in there. Misses the juggle afterwards. Wow! Great comeback there from Chip to take it with Down that stand fierce that has so much priority. Alright, we have 5-star Yi Wang from Southern California. A very strong Ken player going up against Boss. One of Japan's top Makoto players. And you see the back dash and the forward dash mix up there. And the EX Hate just enough to get the stun. He's going to get a huge damage off of that. Didn't get that towards short stun uh, juggle after the EX Hate the second time. But managed to catch him with the EX overhead chop. Uh, Yi's got to see what he can get from momentum here. Didn't really get much going in the last round. Another surprise uh, jumping EX. Uh, uh, axe kick from the air from Boss. And here he goes with the pressure, and he sniffs out that throw attempt. Jump back roundhouse combo right into the Shifu. Ooh, mix ups right there from Yi after that, uh, in that setup when he super jumps there. Very ambiguous. And oh no, the uppercut only hit once, didn't knock him down, and he's gonna take a huge amount of damage from that. Linking Super R1, the Seichu and Godanzuki right off of the Hayate. Powerful combo there for Boss from Boss to finish off that fight. Okay, we're going up against MP. You're a very strong Chun-Li player from Southern California. Nice parry, anti-air. Catching with that stand roundhouse. Ooh, some high sweep for, there from Enki. Very dangerous though. If Chun Li blocks that sweep, she can counter Super Yurian on block. Ooh. Wow, just missed with that charge with the shoulder tackle. And Amir going for a mix up there. Tried to bait him into touching a button to hit with that standing roundhouse. But you could have super jump cancel the super. Here we go with an unblockable from Enki. Hitting from one side and the age is hitting from the other. Nice tech there from Amir. I think Amir didn't quite want to do that stand strong and the super wasn't sure it was going to hit. 
Nice count, nice anti-air with that standing jab. Just a quick hit, catching Emphy by surprise. You had a chance for low forward and super doesn't need it. Catches with that back fierce. That back fierce that just has so much priority. <laughs> Speaking of counter stand jab, Emphy with his own there. A nice low forward in the super. That's that hit confirm, the ever so famous Chun Li hit confirm. And Amir dropping the, the follow-up there. It doesn't matter. He's got the momentum once again. And Amir just getting hit by those Aegis Reflectors. All right, here we go. Mix-up time. And he's got an opportunity here. Not going to quite build up enough meter for one more Aegis Reflector. But he's got the mix-up. Canceling the low fierce into a headbutt to catch that parry attempt. And now he has enough meter. Nice. Gets the throw and finishes it off. Yurian so deadly with those Aegis Reflector corner traps. Good stuff there. Empty looked like he was down that whole round. Comes back with a great sequence there. It's got to mess with Amir's head a little bit. Let's see if he can recover from that. Keep his cool. Nice. You see how fast Yurian dashes. He was able to dash and block that low forward from Chun Li. And Amir sitting on two meters. Yurian with one bar himself. And uh, Yurian is about set up now so that one Aegis Reflector sequence will build up another Aegis Reflector so he can just go for the mix-ups right now. But right now, Amir is just doing great. Oh wait, here we go. Like I said, Aegis Reflector coming out and going for that unblockable again. He's probably got another Aegis Reflector set up. Yep, there it was right there. Once again, the unblockable setup. You cannot block it. You have to parry, but even then you have to parry in two directions. So hard. Of course, going with the Super Art 3 Makoto, that is his specialty, going with a very unorthodox choice, and wow, Rom just going right in there right away, and here he goes, he's got the combo going, and he even got a reset in there, not sure if that's what he meant to do, but he, he, got, he got it in there to do a little extra damage, and now Mike Z with the momentum here, is he going to combo right in the Super? No, he's going to just go for the EX Hayate instead, and try to apply the pressure. Rom juggling with the three Mantis slashes, and he's just gonna go for Chip. Nice play right there. Mike Z did get one parry, but then Rom delayed the next set a little bit. Throw off Mike Z's parry timing. Good stuff from Ya, yeah, yeah, uh, from Rom. Mike Z going right in there with the EX Hayate. Didn't pay off, but here comes Rom's mix-up. Makoto, one of the characters that after the command grab from Yang, he can actually hit with the standing forward and go for the juggle. Nice. All right, here we go. Is this Super Art 3 time? No, once again, just EX Hayate instead. And now Rom gonna go for his Sei Enbu mix-ups. Oh, catches them low, and then drops the Sei Enbu combo. Mike Z gets out of that situation, but he just gets caught by a normal throw. Wow, not a good way to go. Let's fight like gentle bear to strike now. All right, Coco Jean, obviously very well known for using Dudley. Probably one of the best Dudleys in Japan. And Tokido, one of the best Chun Li's in Japan as well. Trying to keep Coco Jean out. Nice parry in the stand roundhouse for anti air. Wow, just punishing that. A uh, low roundhouse juggle uh, attempt from Coco Jean, and Coco Jean counters with his own combo in the super. Nice back swing blow, getting right around Tokido's move. Now he's getting in there. Oh, huge error there from Coco Jean. Let's Tokido throw him in the corner, gets another throw in there. Gives Tokido all the momentum, and wow, low forward into the Hazanchu right over the low roundhouse from Coco Jean. Smart play from Tokido. <laughs> Starting off the round with two quick stand fierces and then another back fierce. Three fierces that Coco Jean has just basically walked into. Nice catch of that low roundhouse. That's what he was trying to do the first round when Tokido punished with the super. Whoa! <laughs> Cross-up tricks! Oh, nice! Just lands with the super, doesn't want to deal with the Chun-Li mix-up. And then Chun-Li using that EX bird kick to get out of trouble. Basically her best um, wake-up option uppercut type move. 
that EX bird kick and catches with the surprise low strong to take the game. Tokido wins it. Sanchez, known for using his namesake, Alex. Sanchez, of course, first name, Alex, as well. Definitely not a matchup commonly seen, Alex versus Buki. Hugo right now throwing Sanchez into the corner so he can apply the pressure. And Sanchez doing an amazing job right now with the normal moves, keeping him out. Alex is standing for such a great far-reaching move for space control. Nice jump fierce there. Tried to catch Hugo with the surprise towards fierce, it looked like. Now Higo with a huge opportunity. He's got Sanchez in the corner. Nice use of that EX uppercut to get out of that situation and keep applying mix-ups. But in the end, Alex takes it with a low strong. Alex has a lot of damage. That's obviously his biggest strength, no pun intended. And uh, Ibuki, of course, taking huge amounts of damage compared to most characters. Nice patient blocking from Sanchez there, but Higa smelled an opportunity there and got a throw off. Got Sanchez dizzy, went straight into a combo. And now with a huge life lead. And Higa just continuing to apply the pressure using Ibuki's speed to overcome all of Alex's moves. Nice, just walk up and throw. Very brave there from Sanchez. Nice, smelled that, uh, sniffed out that throw attempt there it, but ended up falling to the EX uppercut. And now we're down to the last round. Sanchez backing himself into the corner. I don't think he meant to actually throw out that giant uh, standing boot. I think he was probably trying to do an elbow slash to get in. Nice power bomb there. Oh, EX uppercut into the Kusami Zazaku. And right now, Higa doing a great job just kind of zoning Sanchez out. Oh, wow! There was a little surprise trick. He knew that that standing roundhouse was going to whiff, so he used that to bait Sanchez into touching a button, caught him with the EX uppercut. Nice win for Higa. Choosing to go with Yun this match instead of Makoto. Makoto versus Chun Li, not a great matchup. Necessarily. I mean, Makoto's can definitely overcome it. One grab can actually win them the round. The boss going with Yun instead, and here comes the Ganadian combos in the corner. And oh, cross up dive kick. Wow. <laughs> this is probably why Boss decided to go with Yun instead. Able to apply the pressure against Chun Li. Well, right now, trying his best to play a defensive game. Keep Yun out. Nice, and now he's got the meter. Just low forward in the Ganajin. The mix-up in the Ganajin is so powerful that you don't even necessarily need to have it activated during a combo. Missed the last little bit of follow-up there. Oh, no super cancel there for Flo. Nice punish, uh, nice parry, but no punish. The low roundhouse a little too slow. Once again, just activating Ganajin. So hard to block. You can go high, you can go low, get the command throw. And you saw that even after the command throw, he was able to keep the combo going in the corner. Good stuff from Boss. Get ready to die. Ready? Go. Uh, MP getting right in there. Nice. Top to the face. And wow. Flo just going crazy right now with Chun Li. Poking out all those normal moves. He's trying to get in there. Surprises Anshu from Flo. And here he goes. He's going to go off the wall to get out of the corner. We saw Justin do that against MP earlier. Flo's probably going to try to emulate a lot of what Justin did. Just playing a very careful zoning game with Chun Li's normals. But Flo definitely a little braver with them. He's throwing out a lot more normals. Justin is very conservative with that. Oh, just a little too far for that. Low, here's the hit. Here we go. Huge chance for Empy. 
All right, getting the mix-ups in there, but not quite all the way in the corner, but here we go. He caught him with a low pierce. He's gonna go for an Aegis mix-up. Great patience from Flo, but until the very last second. We saw Emphy walk up a couple of times and go low, and then the very last time he walked up and just kind of waited and went low again. Flo expecting an overhead that last time, got caught right at the end, and then took the rest of that damage. Nice care throw there from Flo. Gets Empy into the corner. Tried to go for another care throw, just a little too far. Chumley's care throw is again one of the longest range. A nice counter poke with Stan Strong into Super. And there was Flo trying to go for a mix up. After the Super, you get a lot of advantage there because those jump pierces do not cause the opponent to fall onto the back. So right when they land, they have a mix up to deal with. Either care throws or overheads or low attacks into Super. High sequence there from Flo, but now Empy's got once again the momentum. Here we go. He's going to build another meter, and so he's going to be able to get another mix up going. Is he going to be able to take this one? You see how she's just right outside of range, but as soon as she gets hit, then the Aegis Reflector starts connecting. Great distancing from Emphy there. And now Flo is down just a little bit in life. He's got to make a comeback, but he's got plenty of meter to do, and he's got all the tools necessary. But once again, another Aegis Reflector using the headbutt to cross up so he can go for the unblockable great stuff from Emphy. All right, Edma going up against Boss. Boss, one of the best Makoto players in Japan, and you can see right there, the, right away he starts off with the Hayate mix-ups, going right back into. Wow, he's just—he's already dizzy. <laughs> I can't even finish my thoughts here. It's so fast what Boss is doing there. He's actually getting the Hayates, and right after that, he's got a mix-up. It's either another Hayate or an or one of the grabs there, the Karaksas. And right back into the Hayate mix-ups. So nice first round there from Boss. Quick first round there. And here he goes with the mix-ups again, using that towards strong. Nice jump parry and right into the Karaksa. Wow. All right, Edma finally getting an uppercut there to get some momentum. Let's see if what else he can establish here. Just trying to keep Boss out with those low fours. Trying to cross up Hurricane and didn't quite get it. Oh, we had a Kara Karakusa there. Kara, Kara Karaksa. But uh, wasn't connected. Oh, nice parry there from Edma. And then no linking the stand strong into the Shippu Jinrai Kak. Great play from Edma. Great recovery on round two. All right. All right, here we go with the momentum once again into the Karaksa. Into Hayate, into nice juggle. The juggle is actually a lot harder than it looks, and that neutral throw does so much stun. And here we go. Oh, man. He's working on a perfect. Yep, and he takes it with a perfect with the stand fierce into the Seichusen Godanzuki. And Boss takes game one convincingly with two near-perfect rounds.